three, two, one. Go for lunch. everyone, and welcome to the Falcon Heavy webcast for tonight's Jupiter 3 mission. My name is Ronnie Foreman, and I'm joining you from the West Coast from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, to follow our Falcon Heavy rocket liftoff from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Today's mark, launch marks SpaceX's third Falcon Heavy mission this year and sixth operational Falcon Heavy mission overall. Today, we'll be launching the Hughes Jupiter 3 Echo Star 24 satellite into space for our customer Echo Star and their Hughes Network Systems Division. The Jupiter 3 payload on board the second stage was built by Maxar and will be the largest commercial communication satellite ever to launch into geostationary orbit, weighing over nine tons. Once operational, Jupiter-3 will help meet demand for HughesNet satellite internet in rural areas of the United States and Latin America, as well as demand for Explore service for rural customers in Canada. In addition to supporting enterprise and government applications, Jupiter-3 will also power higher speed satellite internet service plans in North America, while helping to expand and enhance HughesNet across Mexico, Brazil, and South America. We'll have more about our customer and their payload later on during the show, so be sure to stay tuned. At T minus 13 minutes and 45 seconds, all systems are currently go for an on-time liftoff of 11.04 p.m. Eastern time. The vehicle started propellant loading around the T minus 50 minute mark and is nearly fully loaded with propellants now. Weather is green and the range is also ready to support. But if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. The Falcon Heavy that you can see on your screen is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together. Having three cores instead of just the one on Falcon 9 means that we are using 27 engines between the two side boosters and center core today. And that allows us to carry heavier payloads to various orbits in space. From a technical standpoint, we are creating a more powerful first stage that carries more fuel and burns longer than the first stage on a typical Falcon 9 mission. Now at the very top of our rocket, as you can see on your screen, is our payload fairing. This is where the Jupiter-3 satellite is safely enclosed between two composite pieces. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, though, the fairing isn't needed anymore, so we will jettison both halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Both fairings supporting today's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its fifth time and the other for its sixth. Once those fairing halves separate from the second stage, we will of course be attempting to recover them again today with the help of our recovery vessel, Doug. Now right below the fairing, we have a second stage, which is connected to the 28th engine on board Falcon Heavy. This is our Merlin vacuum engine, and its job is to power the payload to its final targeted orbit once the center core and second stage separate. The second stage for this mission is also debuting a new medium coast configuration. Just in case you didn't know, our second stages have three general configurations, standard, medium, and long coast. And we use different configurations depending on how long the second stage needs to operate after launch. A medium coast kit, which is what we're using today, provides better performance for some missions and includes an added battery loaf or power pack, a painted gray stripe on the outside of the fuel tank, and other hardware to make sure that the fuel and stages systems operate as long as needed. Now, if you look very closely at the stage two on your screen, you can just barely see that stripe of gray paint that I mentioned. While in space, that paint will absorb some heat from the sun in order to keep the second stage fuel warm enough for our long flight today. Payload deployment for Jupiter-3 is scheduled to occur after three second stage engine burns and occur around the T plus three hour and 30 minute mark. We hope you'll stick with us till the end. 
Now moving further down the rocket, as I mentioned a little bit earlier today, we have three Falcon 9 rockets essentially strapped together. All three constitute our first stage. Each of the side boosters on either side of the center core are flying for the third time on today's mission, having previously supported two Falcon Heavy flights, USSF 44 and 67. A couple of minutes after liftoff, we'll attempt to recover both side boosters with a land landing on landing zones one and two. And fun fact, landing zone two was built specifically to support dual booster landings like this one. Similar to previous launches, we'll be conducting a one engine entry burn. This allows us to shorten the length of the entry burn, ultimately allowing us to increase performance of Falcon Heavy overall. And speaking of increased performance, we will not be attempting to recover the center core today. If you look very closely, you'll see that the center core doesn't have landing legs or grid fins attached. That's because this mission requires more performance than we have to be able to recover the center core, and that landing hardware isn't needed. But don't worry, today's launch should still be a very exciting one, especially if you're joining us from the Space Coast tonight, where you should be in for some beautiful nighttime landing views. And now, as promised, here's a bit more information about our customer and satellite today. For over half a century, we've been on a journey to connect people, enterprises, and things around the world. Innovation runs deep in our veins, from developing the two-way VSAT in the 1980s, to inventing satellite internet in the 1990s, to launching the first modern era telecommunication satellite in the 2000s. We've tackled the biggest connectivity challenges and applied our engineering excellence to uncover innovative ways to connect the unconnected. Since the launch of the first Hughes High Throughput Satellite, we have engineered some of the highest capacity broadband satellites in the world. And now, our latest and greatest innovation launches a new era of connectivity. Jupiter 3, the world's largest commercial communication satellite. 26 feet tall when stowed, it boasts 14 solar panels unfurled. This massive satellite was purpose-built and engineered like no satellite before. Hundreds of team members have devoted countless hours to bring Jupiter 3 to life. The highly anticipated next-generation ultra-high-density satellite doubles the size of the Hughes Jupiter fleet and brings total throughput to more than one terabit per second, enabling more capacity, better service, and faster speeds. With 300 highly concentrated spot beams, Jupiter 3 expands our reach to nearly 80% of the population across North and South America. The engineering ingenuity built into Jupiter 3 will expand the connected experience. For the family in Ohio, streaming movies on a Friday night. For the student in Mexico, expanding her horizons with access to technology and educational tools. For the farmer in rural Idaho, monitoring the weather each day to manage his crops. For the executive, flying from New York to Los Angeles, holding a meeting over first-class Wi-Fi in the sky. For the senior in Montana, consulting with his doctor by telehealth. For the ranger at a national park, coordinating in real time with emergency responders. For the mango grower in Brazil, expanding her family business nationwide and internationally. For the entrepreneur in Ecuador, promoting his business and taking customer orders. For the grandmother in Mississippi, meeting her new grandchild by video chat. All this and more as Jupiter 3 launches a new era of... Join us. With liftoff just about six minutes and 15 seconds from now, the vehicle and payload are healthy and propellant load is well underway on the launch pad. Speaking of the launch pad, you may often hear the pad on your screen referred to as Historic Launch Complex 39A, and there's good reason for that. 
LC-39A was originally built to support the Apollo program with the goal of landing humans on the moon. This launch pad eventually supported the Apollo 11 mission to the lunar surface, carrying NASA astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins in July of 1969. So we're just about a week past the 54 anniversary. 54 year anniversary. And after numerous launches of the Saturn V and space shuttle vehicles, the launch pad was leased to SpaceX in 2014. Since then, we've launched 66 missions and 38 humans to space from Launch Complex 39A. Today's mission will mark SpaceX's 249th overall mission to date, our 67th mission from 39A, and 50th launch of 2023. We look forward to reaching even greater space milestones on this launch pad for years to come. Now coming up next, we should hear the call out for Strongback Retract. Falcon Heavy tanks are pressing for a strong back retract. So there you heard Mission Control confirming that we are pressurizing the tanks ahead of strong back retraction. Next up, the clamp arms around the second stage, which you can't really see because they're being obscured by those LOX clouds there, are going to begin to open. And that truss structure next to the vehicle, known as the strong back, strong back will retract away from Falcon Heavy. Again, those clouds that you see forming around the vehicle are nothing to worry about. That's actually liquid oxygen boiling off the surface of the tanks inside the rocket. As that boiled off lock, liquid oxygen meets the warm Florida air, it's forming actual clouds around the vehicle. There you can see coming out from behind those clouds, we have had the clamp arms open up around Falcon Heavy in preparation for liftoff. There you have a great view of the strong back actually pulling away from the vehicle. This initial retraction is just a slight movement. Ahead of liftoff, we'll see full retraction so that Falcon Heavy can clear the launch pad. Now the next major milestone we're tracking is, is liquid oxygen loading completion. We're expecting that here in just about a minute. Just about 25 seconds left of liquid oxygen loading. Really gorgeous views of Falcon Heavy on the launch pad tonight. The next major milestone we're tracking is going to be the announcement that Falcon Heavy is in startup mode, which means that the internal flight computers have taken over the final count in, count in the lead up to liftoff. About T minus one minute is when we expect to hear that call out. And that's also when stages one and two will begin to pressurize for launch. Oh, 
launch port has started. As you may have just heard over the nets, we just heard an abort called out from our launch director. We're waiting for other updates from Mission Control, so stay tuned and we'll come back with an update as soon as we can. All parties on Countdown 1, please be advised that we have scrub for the night on Falcon Heavy. If you've been following along, you know we had an abort during the countdown tonight at T minus one minute and five seconds. Prior to that, the countdown was proceeding nominally. And keep in mind that the purpose of the countdown is to help us catch potential issues prior to flight. There are a thousand ways that a launch can go wrong and only one that it can go right. So given that, we are overly cautious on the ground. And if the team or the vehicle sees anything that just looks even slightly off, they'll stop the countdown. Again, the vehicle and payload are in good health, but this will end our launch attempt for today. Our next launch opportunity is tomorrow around the same time, so keep an eye on our social media channels for updates. Hopefully you'll join us. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time.